In this problem, we have an infinite sum, and we have to determine if it converges or diverges. So the first thing you should always try whenever you have an infinite series is the nth term test. You should always just at least mentally take the limit as n goes to infinity of your a sub n, which is this piece here. So tangent of 1 over n. And investigate what happens. If this limit is not equal to 0, then you're done, and the series will diverge by the nth term test. So when we take this limit, the 1 over n inside the tangent function will approach 0. This is equal to the tangent of 0, which is equal to 0. So the nth term test uh, does not work. It fails. So the way to do this problem is to use something else. So there's a very useful thing that you can use to do this problem. And that useful thing is that the tangent of x is approximately equal to x when x is close to 0. Okay, so this is something that um, you may not know, uh, but it allows you, in a sense, to figure out how to do the problem. So if you think about n here, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so 1 over n is getting closer and closer to 0. So in this case, the tangent of 1 over n is roughly equal to 1 over n when n is big. And so what that's saying is that um, the tangent of 1 over n and 1 over n have roughly uh, the same um, growth rate. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the limit comparison test, which tells us that we have to pick something that has uh, the same growth rate. So b sub n will be 1 over n. And then limit comparison says that when you take the limit as n approaches infinity, of a sub n over b sub n, so the ratio. If this limit uh, exists and is equal to a positive number, then the a's and the b's have the same growth rate. In other words, if the sum of the b's converges, the sum of the a's will also converge, and, and vice versa. So let's go ahead and take this limit and verify that we can use limit comparison. So a sub n is the tangent of 1 over n. And b sub n is simply 1 over n. And so you'll notice uh, that as n approaches infinity, you get tangent of 0 up top, and you get 0 on the bottom. But we know tangent of 0 is 0, so you, this has the form 0 over 0. So what we can do is we can use L'Hopital's rule. Now some people might say, oh wait, you, know, you can't use L'Hopital with sequences. That's right, you can't. Um, so just pretend for a moment that uh, we have real variables here, so x is a real number, and life is good. Everything should work uh, perfectly okay. Just mentally note that um, you know, you're dealing for a moment with real values, right? Because if the limit holds for real numbers, it will hold for integers as well. So taking the derivative of tangent, you get secant squared of 1 over n, and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the inside function in this case is 1 over n, which is the same thing as n to the negative 1. And so when you take this derivative, you bring down the negative 1, and you subtract 1 from the exponent. So you just get negative 1 over n squared. So that's the chain rule. It tells us to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of tangent is secant squared, and then times the derivative of the inside. On the bottom, it's the same derivative, so it's just negative 1 over n squared. Nice and easy, and boom, look at that magic. It cancels. We take the limit, so we get secant squared of 0. Secant is 1 over cosine, and cosine of 0 is 1, so this is just going to be 1, which is finite and positive, which is finite and positive. So we can use the limit comparison test. So the limit comparison test applies. And again, what that says is that the A's and the B's have the same growth rate. So the sum of the A's and the B's should have uh, the same behavior. If, if one converges, the other will converge. If one diverges, the other will also uh, diverge. 
So now we just have to look at the sum of the b's, which is a very, very famous sequence. So note, or series rather, so note, the sum as n runs from one to infinity of one over n, this is the harmonic series, or it's just a p series with p equals one. So this diverges by the p-test since p is equal to one, which is less than or equal to one. Remember, remember um, the p-series will diverge when p is less than or equal to one, and it will converge when p is greater than one. So this means that the sum of the a's also diverges by the limit comparison test. So our original series, I'll just put OG for original, diverges by the limit comparison test. So not the easiest problem uh, in the world. Um, it does require that you have this uh, flash of insight right here. Um, how did I know how to do it? Um, I've done other similar problems before. For example, if you look at uh, the sine of one over n, it's a very similar example. Um, in this case, sine of one over n, you also compare it with one over n using limit comparison. If you know Maclaurin series, which you might not know because typically it's studied after you study this, uh, you, you, you know that the first term of the Maclaurin series uh, for tangent and sine is x, so um, that kind of tells you that it's a decent approximation. But now you know, right? Tangent of x is approximately equal to x when x is close to zero. And the same is true for sine. Sine of x is approximately equal to x uh, when x is close to zero. Really useful uh, tools uh, to have uh, handy. I hope this video has been helpful. That's it.